Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, my special guest today is U.S. Senator Bob Casey, and then we'll have a little our popular financial literacy update at the end of the program. All of that follows these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, well, welcome back. We'll look on a positive note. I want to point out, I want to thank our viewers around the state and here in the Susquehanna Valley on WGAL for making us one of the most watched programs uh, in this market on Sunday mornings. We're deeply appreciated appreciative of the viewers. And on a sad note, I want to make mention of the passing this past week of uh, one of the state's leading journalists, Pete DeCourcy, who was a guest on this program many a time, a solid reporter who did great investigative work. He will be missed. And by the way, my special guest, U.S. Senator Bob Casey, tweeted his condolences. Senator, welcome to the program. Terry, good to be with you. And we're going to miss, we're going to miss Pete. Uh, yeah, he did a wonderful job. Yep, he did. All right, Senator, we got a lot to talk about. I want to talk, uh, first of all, about some aspects of the Affordable Care Act. As you know, the rollout didn't go exactly, I think, as the president would have preferred. But there's one thing in there that I noticed immediately after it occurred that you began to move quickly on that I want to talk about, and that's the business of whether the volunteer fire companies, do we, we have the largest number in the country, is that right? We have, certainly by way of percentage, in yeah. when you think about the number of uh, Pennsylvanians whose fire service is provided by volunteer firefighters, virtually anywhere in the state yeah. outside of a big city. Yeah, and you, and the question is whether they're, what they're covered or how they're covered, and if so, what it would cost them. What, and you, you moved to do something about that. Can you explain that? Yeah, because we, I think this is pretty important to talk about. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that in all of the uh, challenges that we face with regard to implementing the Affordable Care Act, that when the Treasury Department and the IRS deal with the definitions, we want to make sure those definitions are applied appropriately. There's no reason why a volunteer fire relief association or a volunteer fire department should have uh, the designation of being an employer. So right. they, we want them to, to clarify that so that it doesn't cause problems with- The cost you're talking about, whether In terms of cover, cover, covering yeah, people uh, yeah. because they're considered an employer. And it's another example of where uh, the Affordable Care Act, upon implementation, will have some challenges with it. And we've got to work through those challenges yeah. to make sure that uh, employers aren't adversely impacted in a way that the law didn't intend. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of these companies, and often you read news and they have benefits and all of that, and I know you've been to many of them. And I never read that they had health care coverage problems in the past. Did you? I didn't. I mean, it never came up. Right. I don't. I mean, I don't know how they got their coverage. It's not something I know very much about. Them. But I think it's important that we talk about that, and it's an, an, a huge aspect of some of these companies that you know protect so many of our citizens. And so you think that that will get resolved? I think it will. You're satisfied with that? And, and sometimes. Um when uh, a department of the federal government uh, has a, a consensus that uh, lands on their front porch, so to speak, yeah. I think they usually try to make it yeah. work. But but we've got to we, we've got to see what their answer is to this to make sure that they don't put a definition in place that doesn't make sense. Right. We're going to cover try to cover a lot of areas with Senator Casey. We thank him for coming on a program. All right. Something that you you also did it kind of it didn't surprise me. You've been you and and Senator Toomey as well have been focusing on a lot of small business activities, the engines of economic growth. And you you made a point recently about restaurants and how important. You know what? Yeah. There are a lot of restaurants and they're important. And you also were concerned about some job creation aspects. Why don't you say something about that? Yeah, you know we have restaurants across a state like Pennsylvania that have such an impact on not just the state but of course the small business community. <clears throat> and if they, if a particular restaurant, for example, or other retail establishments, if they add a wing or a room or a, right. a, a, you know some kind of construction, they can they can get um, the benefit of depreciation under the traditional rule, not in effect now, but will come back into effect if we don't change it. They could take those little bits of depreciation over 39 years. Right. That's not much of a help. Yeah. That's a long time to wait. So the 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 current policy in the last couple of years has been 
to take a bigger chunk of depreciation over 15 years. Right. What I'm trying to do with legislation is preserve that. Don't go back to the old rule of getting right. little bits of depreciation. Right. These get are bigger. all. The, these seem like you know. You go okay. We're getting a. But all of these things in the end matter, don't they? Oh, exactly. I mean, and we don't t tend to think of it in that way. And small businesses every day of the week uh, are asking for yeah. uh, one word: certainty. They just say, Good you know, when tax, th point. when tax provisions change, make, provide some certainty. Here's another thing we're trying to do as part of another bill, which includes the restaurant provision. In addition to that, trying to provide some certainty as it relates to the deduction for expensing. In other words, deductions for the purchase of equipment or, or information right. technology. We should make sure that, that that certainty is there, make it a permanent Two hundred fifty thousand dollar limit and keep See, it in you place. Didn't, you didn't realize how important restaurants are. We go to a lot of them. All right. <laughs> when we come back, I want to ask Senator Casey about Medicaid expansion. It's a it's an important subject and one I want to get his uh, thoughts on uh, after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Business Council Education Foundation educating citizens and business leaders about important public policy issues and civic affairs. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by BetterSaferRoads.com. To voice your support for safer highways and less traffic congestion, visit BetterSaferRoads.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, well, my special guest uh, for this edition of Pennsylvania Newsmaker is U.S. Senator Robert Casey. We're happy to have Senator Casey here. He's been on this show many times. All right, Senator, uh, there isn't any doubt that Medicaid expansion not just in Pennsylvania, but around the country has been a big deal. Uh, as you know, uh, the governor of our state has a healthy PA. It's a particular program that he w wants to push to cover folks that get the subsidy from the federal government through the Medicaid program, or the Affordable Care Act, I guess, and then people can buy it on their own. We have traditional Medicaid expansion. What, what is Senator Casey's preferred view of this? What, 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 what's your thinking about it? I definitely prefer the expansion of Medicaid that the Affordable Care Act contemplated. I was hoping the governor would go in that direction. He hasn't, and I don't agree with that, but we got to try to do everything we can to make this work for as many Pennsylvanians as possible to provide the kind of coverage that Medicaid provides. You know, some people, I think some people have a view of Medicaid that, um, that might be a little bit uh, disconnected from the reality of it. Number one, Medicaid provides not just uh, health care for poor children and, and, and individuals who are low income, right. but it provides a lot of the long-term care. Sure. You know, virtually anyone who has, any family who has spent down their assets uh, to provide long-term care for a loved one, they're, they're getting the benefit of Medicaid. So it's about uh, older citizens, it's about children, right. it's about right. the poor. And another aspect of it I think that people forget is, we were debating this when, when health care was being uh, discussed years ago, when we were 2009 and 10. At that time in the nation, uh, one-third of rural children were covered either by Medicaid or the Children's Health Insurance yeah. And that's a huge program and an important program is actually done during your father's administration. Right. Everybody wants that program. Nobody wants to see right. it go there's, away. At least go there's ahead. a consensus about CHIP. CHIP, ab uh, absolutely. No question about that. But yeah. Medicaid is a big part of this. And the other thing is that uh, a lot of the advocates, the, the American Academy of Pediatricians, for example, or pediatrics, I guess they call it, they have always pointed to the, the uh, early periodic screening and I think it's early, early periodic, screen, periodic screening and diagnostic testing for children that comes through Medicaid, a very good health care right. program for, for poor children. So this is really about the fundamentals, not just of a program, sure. but really what happens to yeah. uh, children and older citizens. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, I, I want to switch gears, talk a little bit about foreign policy. Senator Casey was on the Foreign Relations Committee now move to finance, but uh, we've got this situation in the Senate with sanctions on Iran and where that all goes. He knows a good bit about that. We'll be back with Senator Casey. 
This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. My special guest this week is Senator Robert Casey, the Pennsylvania senior U.S. Senator. Before we get to Iran, extend long-term unemployment benefits is a big issue. Your schedule of votes to, uh, coming up in the Senate. And we go back on January the 6th. Right. Uh, the first vote is likely to be, highly likely to be, um, an extension of what we called EUC, Emergency right. Unemployment term, Compensation. Yeah. Started under President Bush when the unemployment rate was a little, little better than 5.5%. Now the unemployment rate's been hovering around 7 or more for a long period of time. What we're trying to do is extend it at least in this bill for three months, and I would argue maybe even longer. Does in it this pass? state. I think, it, I think there's a, shot, a good shot that it can pass, and it should be bipartisan. In this state, for example, um, it's, it's almost, uh, by one published report, almost 87,000 people. Just consider this, in um, Lancaster County, for example, almost 2,100 people are affected uh, by this. All we're saying is that-, that Lose their benefits if it's not extended. Exactly, lose point. these federal uh, right. emergency right. benefits. Right. We're saying extend it for them and to get them to get them across the bridge, so to speak. But also the economic impact nationally is huge. If you take away this program, uh, it's a real job killer yeah. by one estimate, uh, 200,000 jobs or more. Yeah, yeah the problem, lost. of course, might be in the House where the House, and the, you, you all have quite been on the same page. I mean, that's that's right. one. But I, before I let you go, I do want to bring up Iran. There's a lot of concern about Iran, the nukes, whether the sanctions are in, in place are working. As you know, there's a lot of activity in Iran going on right now, whether the Ayatollah is putting more hardliners around him. Some concern in both parties right. in your Senate, in this United States Senate, over what the president is doing. If you had you know, advice, and you were on the Foreign Relations Committee, so you're, you follow this Middle East stuff closely, what's your suggestion about what should be done there? Well, the, the good news is that the imposition of sanctions that the Congress developed in a bipartisan fashion, the president accepted and put in place over the last couple of years, both here and even with our allies, those sanctions have worked very well because Iran now, the regime, is at the right, table. Right trying to, to, to work out the, the details of a short-term agreement and then hopefully a longer-term agreement to, to take away the threat that Iran would develop nuclear weapons capability, and the capability word is important in that. So what I would suggest, and the, and the administration doesn't necessarily agree with this, by the way, yeah. what I would say to them is, let's have a bill ready, uh, as we've introduced, that, that would say to the Iranian regime, if you violate the short-term agreement, or you don't reach a longer term agreement with us, you'll have more sanctions uh, right. to deal with. It provides a measure of pressure, I think, that would be appropriate, and we'll keep them at the table, yeah. and I think we can work that out. Yeah, I guess before, again, the last point about this uh, is this concern that no matter what we do and how we handle it, Iran will somehow find a way to complete the activity that will lead to the development of nu nuclear weapons and that they just can't be trusted. I mean, you know. Well, I, I certainly don't trust the regime. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but but it's, uh, it's, so it's not even Ronald Reagan's trust, but verify. Yeah, it's, right. it's don't trust and, and definitely don't verify. Don't trust and try to verify, <laughs> maybe. But, but I think it is worthy of pursuit yeah. in the sense, uh, an agreement is worthy of pursuit right. because if we can, by diplomacy, get the result we want, which is an Iran that doesn't have that capability, everybody's better off. All right, our popular financial literacy update. Oh, we're going to get some resolutions on what to do about your money. I don't have to worry so much. When you don't have any, you don't worry about it. No, I'm only kidding. We'll be back with that segment in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. 
have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Hi, welcome back. Well, uh, joining me is Mike Wishnow. He's the Senior VP at the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association and Kelly Childress. She's the CEO of the first, is that Education Credit Union? We are education-based, but it's actually First Ed. First Fed, yeah. First uh, Ed, uh, yeah. But you got an education component in we that? We do. Good we do. for you. Well, I'm a <laughs> professor. What can I tell you? There you go. <laughs> there you go. They're located, <laughs> they're located in uh, Downtown Chambersburg? Actually, close. Um, close. Chambersburg. Well, a, oh, yeah, it's a nice community. You it go is. down there and hang out a while. You can go to Gettysburg and do all kinds mm -hmm. of neat things once you get over there. All right, Michael, look, every year now for the past several years, we've been doing this resolutions for 2014. Before I get into that, however, can you briefly talk about consumers and the credit and how they stood for the past year. Sure, sure. Holiday spending, give, well, give me a, yeah, give us a quick Yeah, holiday spending update. appears to have gone very well. Um, consumers' confidence appears to be higher as we enter 2014 than it was in 2013. Okay. Um, I think that, that uh, 2008 and the financial meltdown is sort of behind us. Uh, you're seeing that with your members, right, Kelly? We are. I could say definitely in the in the past six months, we've seen the confidence level of our members increase. A lot more borrowing. Um, they seem to be more comfortable um, buying cars, purchasing mm -hmm. new vehicles. And presumably they're going to do this in a more sensible way than we saw it into the run-up. You know, you know what I chatted about that? Keep that debt. Go ahead. Finish Abs my thought. Abs absolutely. <laughs> and I think a key uh, thing for credit unions in the future is the financial education education is really educating your members, educating the consumers on, we're here to help you. We want to be your financial advisor. We're not going to put you in a position where we're going to take you back to what happened in 2008. We need to be smart about this. Okay. So make smart, sensible purchases. Okay. Um, make a budget. Stick right. to that budget. Yep. All right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's go right to these resolutions. So the first one you, you sort of led into is develop... Uh, Develop a written monthly and um, written monthly and annual budget. Very important. And and you didn't add a little corollary. Stick to it. Yes, stick to it. <laughs> right. It's real easy to do that as a New Year resolution, just like yeah. going on a diet. Yeah. Uh, but you need to stick to it throughout the year. All right. Resolution number two. If you don't have a relationship with a financial institution, a credit union, a bank, establish one. Yeah. There are 17 million Americans that are unbanked, and what happens is they wind up going to check cashers and pawnbrokers. We don't even want to go into this payday lending thing all that, that you stuff. and I have talked about. And the, the folks are paying way more with those financial institutions yeah. than they would if they got into a mainstream financial institution, provided that they manage their money well and they're not bouncing checks yeah. all over the place and that kind of stuff. Now, overall, do you think that Americans, since this recession and the debt and the problem, are, are uh, acting a little more sensibly about their finances? Well, I, what we do know uh, is that debt levels have gone down. Right. And savings rates have come up. Okay. Now, savings rates are not what they were in the 80s. But at one point, post-2005, around 2006, uh, savings rates were actually yeah. negative. We were borrowing more than we were saving. Yeah, one of the concerns that I keep re hear reading about, and, you know, whether you watch the business channels, are so many people, 75 million baby boomers began in 2007 to become, you know, tracked through the, the portal, you know, for... Senator Case and I were talking about Medicaid, but we also have Medicare and Social Security. 75 million people working longer, many of them not ready for the financial side of retirement. Yeah. And we experience that every day. And I think that's why, again, find the financial education aspect. Are you looking at your 401ks? Are you yeah. looking at your retirement plans? What can you do to increase that so you are ready when that time rolls around. All right, point number three, you get point number three. Resolution number three. Take a critical review of your personal debt. Pull that credit report, review it, make sure that everything on there is legitimate, and how can you consolidate? Consolidation is a big part of that. Okay, you would agree? Oh, absolutely. All right, let's go uh, point number four, Michael. Well, make a plan to save and invest. You talked about retirement, and yes, we're living longer. We're working longer. 
we hope to be able to afford a retirement that allows us to travel, that allows us to do some recreational activities. If you start when you're in your 20s and 30s, it's so much easier than if you get to 50 years old and say, oh my, I better start putting money away. Yeah, I'm telling you, I still have this big concern. There, there, there's sort of two sides about retirement, a retirement and people saving enough. We're working longer. I mean, I think I'm probably an example of that, but I don't know that, you know, just me, it's me. It's not about so much about the finance, just it's what I do and my excitement about the work that I do. Really, that's a real concern. And then how we pay for these entitlements, you know, 75 million people, Medicare, Social Security, how we get a handle on those. Uh, all right, let's go to, what are we at, number four? Uh, number five. We're number at five. number five. Teach your children about finances. This is a very important one. You've got to start off with them when they're young. Um, there's not a lot of financial education now in the schools. They don't have the time or the resources right. to do that. So we really need to be responsible and, and use all the tools necessary. But you've helped enormously here. Oh, with, absolutely. Talk about your program. Yeah, no, our foundation has been funding financial education in schools for the last 15 years. Our credit unions are in 250 of the 500 school districts. We'd love to be in all 500. That's one of our goals. Um, so, yes, there are great resources, credit unions being one of them. There are others out there that can help. Um, there's a website called jumpstart.org. They have all kinds of curriculum, games for kids, all kinds of ways for kids to learn. And really, as Kelly said, it can start in kindergarten yeah. with wants and needs. The Berenstein yeah. Bears are trouble with money. I read it to my kids before they went to school. So in other words, you're working on them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to work on something I've said to everyone in my family. Everyone's on a budget but my 21-month-old grandson, <laughs> mainly because what, he, what I spend on him is like five bucks. <laughs> you know, it's at that point. But, you, you know, I'm joking, but I'm being serious at the same time. We've got to, you know, uh, uh, we got a, you know, a little more than a minute left. I'm going to ask you both this question. Bullish or bearish on the economy? I mean, you run a financial institution. Uh, what, what do you think about next year? I think next it's, year, this year, this we're year, in the next yes. year. Yes, I think it's going to be a good year. I think things are definitely moving in the right direction. At least we're seeing that from a consumer standpoint. The confidence level is up. People are, are saving more, borrowing more. They're being educated. So I think 2014 is going to be a very good year. Yep. How about you? I think consumer confidence will continue to rise. I'm not so sure that Wall Street will do as well in 14 as it did in 13. Yeah. 13 was really a banner year yeah. well, for investments. Stock, yeah, for the stock, stock market, market has done tremendously yeah. well. Yeah. But, um, but I think it'll be a solid, yeah. progressive. Everything we see yeah. shows delinquencies going down and, right. and numbers going we up. We still have sort of a structural imbalance where too many people in the middle class and you know lower income levels have not improved their financial situation markedly enough while, you know, at the top level people are doing very well. I think that structural side of it, I don't know if you see that in your, in your operations or not. Yeah, and I think that, um, again, that's why credit unions play such a, got an important role in this. Thank you. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, stay well.